What is up guys and welcome back to Electrics Moto. Today we have a live in the flesh, the E-Ride Pro Mini. This bike has been long awaited. We've had a lot of questions about it and we just got ours out of the box, put it together. And today we're gonna to talk about all the specs, all the features, give you everything that you need to know before you make a purchase on your next Mini E-Moto. Okay, so I got my phone out so I can give you guys all the specs exactly as it states on E-Ride Pro's website. We have zero to 30 in three seconds, top speed, 47 miles an hour, six kilowatts of peak power, and a 60 volt, 30 amp hour lithium battery with Samsung cells. I think the Samsung cells is oftentimes overstated or underrated. Having good cells in your battery makes all the difference in the longevity of your battery. 40 plus miles of range, we all know that is like a very skeptical topic. You really don't know how much range you're gonna get on this bike unless you've ridden it, depending upon how hard on the throttle you are, how heavy you are. You know, there's a lot of things that go into the distance you're gonna be able to travel on an electric dirt bike. Something that I did not expect, a weight limit of 302 pounds on this bike, which is much more than what I anticipated. I would assume that this would have been about a 200 to a 250 pound weight rating, but this does in fact get up to 302 pounds. And that is a, this is a big person on a little bike. Um, the unit weight, so this bike comes in at 107 pounds, which is actually pretty light. I think we could probably do like a, a lift test here. I don't wanna rip the fender off. I would rip the fender off. I don't wanna do that. But um, for what you get in this little mini Emoto, it comes with all of the goods that you get from E-Ride already. You know, here at this shop at Electrics Moto, we are pretty keen on the E-Ride products. Honestly, I think they're the best product out there right now. I don't think that there's a better bike for the money. Yes, it is on the more expensive side, but if you're buying a bike for the long term, you want a bike that comes with a good warranty, a good back end support, and a lot of dealer influence. You got a lot of people that sell these bikes so you can get them worked on relatively easily. Now, let's dig into the ergonomics of this thing because we have a completely different display, which I'm really hoping that they go to on all of their other bikes. But let's talk about the display, talk about the way this bike feels some of the plans because I can already see we can add some items to this bike right out of the gate and then uh, we'll get you guys out of here with all the information that we can. Okay, so I'm gonna try not to move so much so you can kind of see what I'm seeing here. This is the new display on the E-Ride Pro Mini. I would absolutely love to see this display across all of their bikes and if I had to guess, I would imagine once they run out of the other displays, this is gonna be the new full color display that we get from E-Ride. That is totally skeptical at this moment, but based on what I know and what I've seen, this right here makes a lot more sense across all of their bikes. Um, and it doesn't take up the middle spot right by your bar clamp, where we know if we put a warp nine bar mount here, then we have to get a, an adapter to fit our screen. For those of us who like to run screens, that kind of sucks to do. This makes a lot more sense. So let's go through the modes real quick. If you press park, once the bike's turned on, you immediately go into eco. You can see the E right there. And if you wanna go past eco, you press it up to sport. So this bike has two modes, eco and sport. I'm not exactly sure of the total um, kilowatts per yet, but this is what you can expect and this is what you're gonna see on the screen. Obviously you have your mile per hour display here, your odometer reading and your regen button. So you have L2 off, one, two off. So just like their other bikes, like the 3.0 for example has a low power mode or a low regen mode and a higher regen mode and then you have off that's usually managed by a toggle switch right here it's nice to just have it on the screen so you know what you're in you press it and then you're done obviously you got your trip trip rating here just tells you if you want to switch around and go to different trips but the overall distance that's been done on this bike has been three point something miles. Um, and most of that was done in the factory. My assumption is that they run these bikes for a while when they're um, at the factory. Now you have reverse on this bike. So just like all the other bikes, I don't know why that's a lowercase R, but 
it is, that's your reverse is now engaged. You spin your throttle, you go backwards, your horn. I'm not gonna bore you with the horn because we all know that the horns are extremely annoying. Now I have not looked, just like all the other throttles, it looks like, I hope you can see this throttle on this side. I'll try to come over, sorry, a little bit here. Up front, you have your light switch where it's like a trigger for your light switch. All the throttles are moving to this throttle across all the E-Ride products. The 3.0, the SR, the S, and the 2.0 will all have the same throttle, which is really smart because then you can kind of put them on whatever bike you need them to be on versus having to order a specific throttle for a specific bike. Now, what I see right when I look at this is these mounts are, or these uh, bolt holes are going to work with the Warp 9 um, bar mounts. So right out of the gate, I know I'm going to put a warp nine bar mount on this bike. I will put warp nine bars on this bike and I will get it kind of configured to the way that we want it. Um, as we always do, we also do drop brackets. That's where things get a little bit interesting on this bike. There are a couple of different opportunities for you to make this bike more precision fit for you. And I'm going to show you those right now. These brackets are the same brackets that come on the 2.0 SR 3.0. So you will be able to get a foot peg in here immediately. They come with the crappy foot pegs that everybody hates, most people despise. Um, but the foot peg position, we always put a drop bracket on all of our bikes that we sell, all of our bikes, all the bikes that we build for ourselves, we do that every time. What E-Ride did was put an additional hole under here, which is probably kind of hard or impossible for you to see right now, but you can drop these brackets down an inch. So you don't need a drop bracket, you don't need anything else to bring these foot pegs lower, and on these smaller bikes, having a lower foot peg is definitely something that I like to do. I do it on all bikes anyways, but being able to drop this down a little bit opens up that cockpit area and it makes you just feel better on the bike. Um, another thing that's new that I've never seen any of the other small Emotos do, you have a threaded hole right here. My assumption for this hole is only one thing, that you can now add basically a wheelie bar that will come out and you can tuck your front foot underneath that wheelie bar. So when you're doing wheelies or you're putting your heel up on it so you don't fall off the bike, a lot of people install stuff like that on their bikes already. My assumption is the forethought was there for this product and that's probably why it took so long to come to market is now you can just add this right, right from the factory. You don't have to have any adapters. You can just install it and now you're able to use it. All right, while we're in the back of the bike, let's talk about the shock. As you can see, this shock is inverted. So generally your remote reservoir is up top and the shock is mounted differently. My assumption is based on what I see up here is there's just not enough space for a remote reservoir. And on a lot of other bikes that are the mini style bikes, you don't get a remote oil reservoir. You just get the shock in the spring. So being able to flip that around and invert it allows for this to have a remote reservoir and obviously it gives you a lot more adjustment capability within the settings of this bike, which definitely another thing that is super important for anybody who's want wanting to ride this bike seriously. You wanna be able to have the best shocks possible. Fast Ace has been proven to be a good fork and shock combo and I'm stoked that they did not skimp out on this and they put a true moto style shock and fork on this bike just like all of their other products that are currently on the market while we're back here let's talk about a couple of things that i don't like this is a single piston caliper brake that i hate I, I don't just not like it i despise it i don't know why you would put a single single piston caliper brake on here you should have definitely done at least a dual cal or a dual piston caliper but that's what it is that's what they decided to do so i can Assume right now this is a mineral oil style brake, not a dot four fluid brake, which is fine, I guess, on the smaller and light E-Motos. However, with only a single piston, these brakes are probably gonna fade really, really fast, especially on a bike that goes 47 miles an hour. I think that was their being a little cheap there, but I mean, it is what it is. There's a lot of other components that make up for that. But based on what I see of this caliper size, and I have not done any measurements, I would assume that you can probably take a 2.0 uh, rear caliper off and put it on here so you will have a four piston caliper. Now, 
the rotor size is going to be the thing that kind of dictates that and I'm not sure if any of that's possible but just looking at the bracketry itself it looks roughly the same so that's definitely something we are going to test out and try but right now fresh out of the box you get a single um, piston caliper for your rear brake. So while we're on brakes, let's move up to the front. We're also dealing with another single piston caliper. Again, don't love it. I'm not exactly sure of this rotor size. It looks like it does not say it on there. That is probably a 200 millimeter rotor. Um, all the specs will be on the website. If you're looking to order this bike, I'll put the link in the description so you can just check on it and you know read all the things on it that you'd like to read. A thing that I do like, they came with some pretty decent Kenda tires. The problem is I think they will probably end up going to a cheaper tire in the future and they've been known to change their tires just randomly and you really never know what you're going to get but currently what we have on the bikes that we have in stock are the kenda tires so um, i'm pretty stoked on that it's actually a really good tire to come from a factory i don't know if there was a shortage in other tires and they just had to go with this one but for now this is what we're going to see on all these bikes and hopefully that's the case for the future as well all right let's talk about this for a second this is a 420 chain. On the RTR, the one thing that I absolutely despise about the RTR is that it comes with basically a bicycle chain. Um, yes, they're probably beefed up. Yes, they're a little bit more heavy duty, but these bikes require a motorcycle chain. And this comes with a 420 chain, just like the Suron Hyper B does. I think that is an oversight on the RTR guys part because you're dealing with a bike that has more power and more torque than this bike and it's running a much smaller chain. The biggest complaint we get from customers about the RTR is the fact that they're constantly breaking chains. I think that's kind of unacceptable when we're this far ahead in the e-moto market. Um, it's not something that I want to see. So to see a 420 chain on here lets me know that this thing can take some power and obviously it's going to put out you know, enough power to require this size of chain. If it would have been anything less, I would have been disappointed. So I'm pretty stoked on the way that this turned out and I'm happy that they went with this to give customers what they're gonna need for the long term. You're still belt driven, it's not chain driven. So it's not a direct drive bike. You do still have to deal with a belt. For some people, that's a bad thing. For me, I've never had an issue with a belt. So I don't really have too much of an opinion on it. However, on all the other e-ride products, you're your primary driver, your chain side, your chain drive and your sprocket is on the right side of the bike. On the Mini, it is all on the left side of the bike. My assumption is there had to be some type of configuration issue with the way that that motor's positioned in there. Just like the Suron Hyper B, the motor is positioned in a really weird way, or at least just a different way than all of their other bikes. So this, I'm assuming because of its size and the motor size it has in it, needed to be configured a little bit differently to make all of this work. But so far, this is a solid, solid option. I'm super stoked on it. I don't think the belt driven the belt driven topic is going to be much of an issue. I know some people disagree with that, but for me, it's just not something that I've experienced. We've ridden our bikes pretty hard and we're still yet to blow a belt up to date. Okay. So something that I love that I wish more companies did was keep most of the pieces the same. And when I say the same, I mean, we are able to put so many aftermarket parts on this bike directly from the factory. That is not the case with the Suron Hyper B. That is not the case with the RTR. They kind of come built differently and they followed the same process that they build all their other bikes with. So we're gonna be able to swap a lot of things out on this right away. One of the most notable things that I love putting on a bike every single time I get it is the seat. This seat is the same exact seat as the S, the SR, the 2.0, the 3.0, all the bikes share the same exact seat, which means you can put a seat cover on this from day one. You don't have to wait for the aftermarket to catch up. I think that's a huge benefit to the E-Ride product, the E-Ride Mini product versus all the other Mini E-Motos on the market is that you can configure this thing pretty much right out of the gate from the factory exactly how you want it. Now, the, the suspension question, I don't have any answers for that yet. Um, there are gonna be some items and some things that you're not gonna be able to touch. I'm really hoping that the brake adapters will mount up and all of that will work because that will be a huge deal for this bike. But overall, it's stature. It comes with good bars, nice wide grip. Everything feels like an E-Ride Pro. This basically feels like, I mean, it feels like a 3.0. It, it has the same geometry as all of their other bikes. It has the fast ace forks that all of their other bikes have. 
I just think it was wise to continue to duplicate the th same product just in a smaller form factor to give people what they actually want. And in my opinion, what the market needed was an e a mini Emoto that's fully customizable directly from the factory without having to wait for a bunch of people to start configuring parts for this bike. These came in today, we assembled it today, and you should be watching this video on the same day that we got the bike. There are very few of these in the country. We have a couple left in stock. If you're interested in purchasing it, I will leave a link in the description so you can go and purchase it, as well as build out a link list that will also be in the description for all the products that we talked about that I know for a fact already fit this bike so you can start customizing it right away. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. I answer them every single morning. Call the shop if you wanna chat. I will leave the number in the description as well. And we'll see you guys on the next one.